This is a demo of Workbench, a suite of modules for Drupal 7, which allow you to set up editorial workflows. I'm just signing in with the admin user. When I do so, you'll see I have a range of menu options across the top, most of which you'll know if you already use Drupal. But there's addition of one called My Workbench, which gives me the opportunity to look at my content and also to create content. You'll see that I've got the ability to create two types of content, either article based content or basic page content. There could be many content types underneath this option, but it depends which ones the admins have actually set up as being associated with Workbench. I have the opportunity to add media, to do a file list of all media, to look at what sections I have access to, to look at what drafts I have in progress and to also see what content needs reviewing. Currently you'll see there's absolutely nothing on the home page at all. Um, this is a completely vanilla install, so there's nothing on there at the moment, so we'll go ahead with creating an article. So I've already used the title of this for a previous article, so that's why it appears in the auto drop down. Enter some body content. I can also enter an image as part of the standard article type. I can also choose which section I add this under um, because I'm an admin. Save it. You'll see because I'm logged in, I've got various other edit buttons open to me. It tells me the status is draft. Um, I could also apply it as a needing review or as published. At the moment, I'm not going to do anything with it. So if I log out, you'll see that nothing still appears on the home page. So I'm going to go ahead now and publish that article. So I log back in as admin. And then you'll see that I've got the options there to either publish it or say it needs review or board approval, which is a custom type that I've added in, which we'll talk more about later. So I've now published that. Again, you see that I've got the options to edit it because I'm still logged in. And if I log out, there you'll see it available on the home page to unsigned in users. So as an unsigned in user, I could go ahead and make a comment. Save that. You'll see it tells me that it's been queued for an administrator to review, which is why I can't currently see it on the home page. Log back in as an admin. And you'll see I have the option to approve it, which I do so. Log back out. And now you'll see that as an unregistered user, I actually get to see that comment along with everybody else. Now I'm going to sign back in as admin again. Now because I'm an admin, I'm allowed to actually make comments and those comments will appear straight away on the site. Um, that's a permission that I have as an admin user and all of these permissions are fully configurable so I can change them however I want. So again, log out and you'll now see that there are two comments available, both of which are live. I'm now going to log back in as an admin and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go and have a look under my content, see my recent content, click on that and I'm going to create a new draft. Now this new draft won't actually replace the published content um, because it would need to be published before that could happen so it will just be ready as a draft. Um, to be part of the uh, editorial workflow. So if I log out, you'll see that those amends that I just made aren't actually visible just yet. I've now logged in as a member of staff. As a member of staff, you'll see that I have much less options open to me in terms of menu items. But I do still have the My Workbench area, and from that I can create an article. However, as a member of staff, I'm not able to actually publish my articles I can only leave them as draft, I can amend my drafts, and I can actually flag my drafts up as needing review from someone who does actually have permission to publish them. As a member of staff, I'm only allowed to actually post stuff into the product section. And you'll see that I don't have very many options open to me at the bottom like I did when I was an admin. I save my content. And you'll see that it's available under my drafts. 
and click on that. I'm actually going to go and edit my draft again and add a little bit more into it. Now this is obviously still just a single draft. Which I'll save. But you'll see it tells me that I've actually made two saves of that draft. However, if I just view my drafts, I've just got a single draft because I am just working on a single article. I'm now going to flag that up as needing review. Now I've logged in now as an internal communications manager, you can see that in the top right, and that person has fuller content management access. You'll see that they have the ability to actually add stuff into lots of sections. They can also publish content as well. And this is what they're going to do. So I'm going to publish my article. You'll see the article now appears on the home page. What I'm now going to do is actually unpublish that article and push it back into draft status. You'll now see that I've got a bit of an audit trail available to me. It shows me that I have two stages of that article, gives me the option to actually apply a new stage to them, it shows me exactly who's made those changes in the past. So I'm reverting that and then I get notice to tell me what I've done. And then finally I can republish. As well as creating articles, I can also select files and upload them to a universal media library that's accessible by people who have rights. So here I've selected a picture to upload, but I could upload pictures, mp3 files, videos, documents, spreadsheets, whatever we set in the back end as being permissible. So there's a picture of an elephant I've uploaded, and I'm just going to save that into the media library. You'll there see that's now available with some pictures that I uploaded earlier. So, so far we've looked at how editorial workflow works. We're now going to go and have a little bit of a look at permissions. So, we talked earlier about how certain editors are able to submit content into certain areas. And this is governed by either the menu of the site or the taxonomy. What I'm doing here is actually applying it to taxonomy. And you'll see here that I have a taxonomy called organisation with three vocabulary areas called board, marketing and products. When we click on the roles, you'll see that there are various roles that are assigned to being able to edit organisation. That's the content managers. Um, and you'll also see which sections are available in Workbench. There you'll see that I've chosen taxonomy rather than menu structure as my way of applying um, management over, over Workbench. And that the content types that are enabled are the article and the basic page. If we had other article types we wanted to give people ability to um, manage workflow on we could do that as well while keeping those separate from the article types or the content types that are used by your site designers. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go and have a look at the taxonomy and we're going to add a new item into it. And we're going to add an item called sales. And we're going to make that available for workbench access. and then save that. OK. We now go to Workbench Access. You'll see that Sales is now available, but it doesn't have any editors assigned to it at all. So if I click on the editors, Well, there's no editor that I want to be able to give it access to at the moment. I'm going to actually add generically a whole role. If I say that all content managers are able to access stuff, add stuff into sales, you'll see that there's now three people who've got permission to do that. Managing director, marketing director, and a content manager. But actually, I want this to be just the sales director who can send stuff to sales. But I don't currently have a sales director, so I now need to go and create that person. So I go to people, I go to add a user, I'm going to create that sales director. I'm going to put their email address in. So 
select a password for them say that I want them to have content manager privileges and I'm also going to ask the system to send an email notification to that person so that they know all about their new account that tells me that welcome message has been sent and if I go and check my email you'll see that one has appeared telling me that I now have that account set up gives me a link that I can go to to access my account for the first time so now we've set up that sales director we now need to give them permission to actually access sales as part of the um, workbench editorial workflows so we go to access go to editors click on sales start to type in the word sales director you'll see it recognizes that that role exists I can take that person and then apply them to the sales section there's my sales director profile page I'm now going to look at the permissions so if you remember I set my sales director up as a content manager I also have administrative rights um, that I can apply to people I have content editors, I have library editors I've got authenticated users, these could be your clients who've actually got um, registered accounts and we've got anonymous users who are generally just any visitor to your website now you'll see that there's a whole range of configurable settings that you can apply different permissions to different users so this is a very very flexible way of actually being able to manage people's rights to be able to do certain things on the site and you'll see that because we've enabled articles and basic pages then every time we associate a content type with Workbench then we have to go in and set the relevant permissions around what those users can actually do with those content types that we've set up also in terms of what individual editors are able to do in terms of reviewing or publishing or creating drafts all of these things are configurable under permissions as well now the standard is draft needs review and published but you can also add your own content states as well like I have board approval in already but there could be needs legal review or needs PR review and this is where you can create this under states then obviously with states after that comes transitions so things move from draft to needs review things can move back from needs review to draft or from needs review to published and every time that we need to create a new state we need to actually create a transition between those states this is all part of defining the workflow now with such complex workflows it's handy to have a way of checking what you've set up so here we're going to actually see what a content manager can do we're going to ask the question as to whether a content manager is allowed to publish article based content and we'll get a green tick that shows that they are we're now going to ask the same question of just a general authenticated user so this is someone who's just signed in but who doesn't necessarily have any specific rights to publish content and what you'll see here is we get across and a whole list of reasons why they can't do this but also some guidelines of what we need to do if we want to give them those permissions